Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're taking this and we're gonna turn it into this. <laughs> Ooh, la la. This iron here has seen better days as well as the knob, the tote, the body. And we're gonna be doing an over the top rebuild of this thing with a couple other channels. So in this rebuild, I'm gonna make the knob and tote. Hand Tool Rescue is rebuilding the body and Japaning. Rex Kruger is making the actual wooden sole. Green Beetle is making a gorgeous iron for it. And then we're also gonna have Yuri Tukman who's gonna be doing a bunch of carving on the chip breaker. Unfortunately, I made the knob and tote a while ago and this one got a chip in it and I lost all my footage. So that means we're gonna to have to remake it. Let's have some fun. So. The original one was made out of oak and walnut, and I really love those. I had a beautiful piece of wild walnut and wild oak for it. Um, however, I didn't have any more of that material to make the second set. And since my footage for the other one was lost uh, due to my NAS getting hacked, uh, we're going to remake this. This one I'm going to be making out of maple. Um, both inside and outside are maple. The outside will be this uh, curly maple with really beautiful tiger stripes on it. The inside will also be curly maple, but it will be torrified curly maple. So we are going to rip these down. I'm going to cut them um, apart and then sandwich in that other piece in between. It is thick enough. I could have just made it out of the maple, but we're going to leave it the way it is. I'm also going to be cutting the grain on this in the wrong direction, technically, uh, but it, it isn't a huge issue if you cut the direction on the plain tote wrong as long as you know which direction it's going. So it's kind of one of those things you just got to, to think about. Um, but we are going to be uh, having uh, this for show, and the tiger stripes will really show up far better running in the other direction. So um, one of those choices we just decided to make on this one. So if you really want it going the correct direction, uh, the winner of this plane will actually be getting both totes, uh, so you can choose which one you want, and that one actually goes in the correct direction. You can't see me right now, but I'm doing air quotes. So we're going to glue these together, sandwich them down, and then set them aside. You don't need a crazy amount of clamping strength for this, uh, but I do want to um, squeeze out the excess so I get a, a good natural bond between them. But with epoxy, you don't need to crazy squeeze them down as you do with uh, PVA. So we're going to let this sit overnight and then come back to it. And this will be more than enough to get the knob and toad out of it. And I've got another project. I made this one a little bit bigger so I can pull that out of it. So I'm spacing out how much material do I actually need uh, for these pieces in here. And I figured, nah, that's about right. For the uh, the handle portion, the tote, we're just going to cut that off and start working on it from there. Uh, most of the time I would try and keep the block in length and I decided to um, cut off for the knob but then later I decided I actually want to keep length on the board so I'm going to use the other piece that I cut off to turn into the knob. Uh, you'll see that when we get there. We want to get a nice clean surface on this and reference it down. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plane down the sides until they're the same thickness away from the middle. Uh, that way I have the same amount of maple on both sides of the maple. Uh, this makes it so when I center it out it looks like it's running down the middle. Uh, it's just better to take care of right now. And I need to take off a decent amount of material down this. I'm gonna, I want the, the final thickness of it to be about 7 eighths of an inch. Some people like it to be a little bit fatter. Some people like it to be a little thinner. Um, it's usually between 3 quarter and 1 inch that the, the tote thickness is. And I like mine to be about 7 eighths, right down the middle. So I'm going to be cutting it a little bit oversized. And then we will come back in and plane it down nice and smooth. And uh, that is the blank I'm going to be pulling it out of. Now that it's all cut apart, we can smooth it off and save those other pieces. I put those in the scrap box. I have a really nice scrap box with tiny pieces that are still of some value. And I, I regularly go back to it and, and pull pieces out of it. Actually, these pieces were pulled out of that scrap box. Yes, always have water in hand. When you're working oh, really? with uh, hand tools, it, uh, it, it, it it's needed. <laughs> Luke and I are always uh, getting water for each other while we're recording. Now, there are patterns you can get for this um, that you can download. Uh, Veritas actually has a whole series of them that are really, really cool. Uh, they have all of the measurements and markings and things of that nature in there. Uh, but this one is slightly different. It's a, it's a slightly different shape. So I'm just going to use the original one to trace it out. And then we're going to cut two holes where the interior curvatures run to. Uh, this gives you a fairly nice clean surface you can bring things down to. And as long as these two holes are in place, the rest of it's kind of playing connect the dots with curves and uh, goes fairly straightforward. One of the things you always want to think through when you're making a tote is you want to leave it large. 
because you can always take off more material. Once you go down too small, then yeah, you start running into problems. But the nice thing about it is you can make it whatever you want. You can make it whatever shape, size, you can put indents for your fingers. Uh, you can make a tote be exactly what you want it to be. I'm going to come in with a carcass saw or uh, with my crosscut saw and basically cut down to the holes and take notches out here and there until we get to the, the rough shape. I could come in with a turning saw, but I find it just to be a little faster to just come in with a, uh, a standard straight saw and work down to it. Then I'm going to grab my most heavy duty rasp and I'm going to be taking off a lot of the material. Uh, a cabinet rasp can be an amazingly fast tool and it is surprising how fast they work. And we're going to take all that down and get it to roughly the shape and size we want. Next, before I go any farther, I'm going to drill a hole. Um, sometimes I actually like to do this as a block, and if you look at the Veritas plans, they have it as a block, so that the, the block you cut out is at 90 degrees to the angle of the hole. However, this one, the angle is ever so slightly different than um, it would be on the normal, um, uh, normal Stanley sizes. So I wanted to make sure it matched the original. For that, we're going to run some test drills. This is the test drill where the brass ferrule will go in the top, and so I need to make sure I'm only going down so, so far. And remember, when working with auger bits, you always do the big bit first and then come in with the smaller bits. There's also a larger hole on the bottom that will be a recess for the thread and the casting to go into. And then we're going to drill from one side and then drill from the other uh, until the holes in the meet in the middle. One trick to it is just make the hole in the middle just a little bit larger so that if your holes running from either end meet slightly off, then the quarter inch shaft going through them will, will match up. For the actual shaping, I really love this part. I'm going to be using cabinet rasps to take off the majority of the material, and they are incredibly fast. They are just unbelievably fast. Really, really, yeah, this is probably the quickest way to do it. Even if I had a four-dorm and really nice Dremel or a belt sander, this would probably be faster to get down to a, a smooth surface. And we're just going to be playing with this, going from rasp to um, fine file. Uh, heavy rasp, light rasp. Heavy file, light file, very fine file, and I can get the, the surface I want very, very quickly. And I, I love this organic shaping and just kind of detailing, and I'll work on it for a little bit, and I'll take it out and I'll feel it in my hand, and then I'll work on it a little bit and take it out and feel it in my hand. I'm just going until it feels right. There is no right or wrong way. There is no perfect shape to it because every hand is different. The most important thing is it feels good in your hand, and if you can do that, then phenomenal. I'm also going to be leaving it a little bit fat because I haven't fit it into the plain body itself yet, and I want to make sure that it will work in there, and I always have more material to take off rather than having too little. And so we can try with playing it in place. On this one, there's also a little nub in the front uh, that it has to recess into, so we're going to have to drill a tiny little hole in that. Uh, the recess here wasn't quite large enough, so I had to get a gouge and make it just a bit bigger to fit that threaded insert. Here you can see the nub just in front of the threaded insert that stops it from laterally turning, so we can find out exactly where that needs to be, and then drill a little hole. Make sure you don't go through. Uh, just a little bit of a dimple so that it will, will capture it. Okay. Then we can put it in place, check it out, put the screw in it, and... Uh, yeah, that looks like it's about right. I wasn't sure how um, close the top was, so I wanted to make sure I could screw this down in place and then uh, put the iron in it and make sure the iron didn't run into the, the top of the toad. I wanted the insert for the brass ferrule to be very, very tight, um, so I left out making the final adjustments on it until it was all ready to go in. Uh, so we could drill a little bit deeper and make sure it was right where it needed to be. Using this depth gauge on there allowed me to know, mm, yeah, I need to go a little more. Or, oops, I went too far. <laughs> Always remember, take off too little until it's too late. And, and then start over because you messed up. Or at least that's the way it usually works for me. So let's test this out, put the bit in here, and the, the threaded bolt for it is ever so slightly short, and I had to, to work on it a little bit to get down. You can see how this actually recesses a little bit more into the tote than I want, so we're actually going to come back a little bit later and smooth out the top and bring the top of the tote down to then be flush with the brass insert so it has a nice fine fitting in here. I'm going to bring in a uh, bow sander, and the bow sander actually shows me where there's imperfections. The, the dust kind of fills in different places, and you see very obviously, ooh, I need to come back and address with that. And so I'm using my finest file and belt sander, uh, bow sander, or just 400 grit sandpaper. And I spend a good while at this. I want to make it sure it's really nice and smooth before we put the finish on. Uh, having this clean and true 
through is is very very important. Now we're going to switch over to working on the knob, and for this I wanted to do something a little different. Everyone's made a round knob on the lathe before. Oh, not everyone, but you know, it, it, you've seen it done before. It's blah, and I don't want blah. I want chamfers. Uh, so we're actually going to be making an octagonal tote, uh, and. I really like the look of it. So that means we're going to go back to this block and I'm going to rough it down to the shape. It was very, very close to the size it needed to be. Um, and I could have sawn, sawn, sawn. I could have sawn it asunder. Um, but I just decided to go with a plane. Hitting it with a scrub plane and then coming in with a smoothing plane uh, really made it a lot, lot faster. And then I want to rip this down. So the, the block is, if I remember correctly, an inch and a half by an inch and a half. Um, if you were looking down on the tote from above, it would be inch and a half by inch and a half. And I'm going to leave this long. Originally, I was planning on cutting it short, uh, but then I realized, wait a second, if I leave it long, that gives me something to hold on to. So leaving some mass on there allows you to work with it. If I were doing it in the lathe, then I might cut it off short, but yeah, uh, actually it's nice if you can play with that. Yeah. I'm also going to use the original tote and find out where all of the different clearances are. Uh, the original tote was about this diameter, and so I can put that on there, and then I can plane down the corners until it gets to the octagonal shape. I can use the scrub plane to take off the majority of it. Uh, even with this curly maple, you just kind of stay away from it and don't gouge down too far. And then once I get close, then I can come in at the plane, and I can turn the octagonal shape until it just touches that circle. Then we can come in and mark all the way around at the different marks on this. Like um, I want one at the smallest point in the knob, one at the largest point in the knob, and then one at the bottom of the knob to know where to cut it off. I can then put tape on the saw, and I saw until it just touches the tape, and then I rotate it quarter of the way around, and I'm going to do four sides. And then I'll come back together and I'll play connect the dots between those four sides and do the other ones. Uh, the first cut that I made is actually going to be the cutoff where it's going to cut into the saw. The second one is actually at the thinnest point in the collar. Um, and that is going to be a notch in between. So I can cut down to find out uh, where is that going to fit and then file it down too because this is the, the thinnest point in it. Uh, I'm going to make it much, much smaller um, with a series of files. Uh, this is actually a rat tail file for um, for chainsaw chains, and I found it to be the perfect uh, diameter to fit in there. And I used it kind of like a saw to cut down in that hole all the way around. And then we can work on the top of it and round that off. I have one line on there showing me where the top of the round should be, the, the fattest point in the knob. And I play connect the dots from the top all the way down to that line. And I'm going to do this, rather than doing each side individually, I prefer to do every other side and make a square and then come back and make the sides in between match. And I find that to be a very easy way of making the octag octagon work out. If I do one at a time, it just runs into a few problems. Then the last step is connecting the smallest point on the knob up to that rounded section. And this I'm going to be doing with a, a heavy rasp to get the majority off, and then I'll come back in with a smaller rasp and a smaller file, and then once we get it to here, it's about the right shape, uh, we're just going to slowly detail this down. Perfect. And here it's very, very close, and everything else is basically going to be done by hand. Uh, there, one last thing is I need to cut off uh, the lip around the outside and make that octagonal well. And then I realized, eh, before I go, let's actually, uh, let's cut this hole. So we are going to sure. bore this from one side to the other, and my hole was ever so slightly off. Oops. Um, so I had to come back in and ream that out with the uh, rat tail file and get it centered back up. We're going to chamfer the, the top corner and bevel that down so that the, the flathead screw will fit into it. And then we can come back to that circle we drew and octagonalize the bottom. And I like to do this with the, the chisel. I could have done it with the, the rasp and file, um, but I like working with the chisel. Um, plus, in this case, you also notice we are working uh, a cross grain, and so the curls come off in these weird, chunky sizes. Once we get them down close to their size, then I can come in with the file and do the last little bit, taking it right up to the line and making it sweet. And after this point, it's all about fit and finish, making it feel nice. And honestly, the octagonal knob feels really nice. Uh, I was very surprised by its its comfort. Yeah, I want to like put it together and make sure everything looks good and fits in there right. And then it's the, the final details on it. And I'm going to be going over it all one more time with the finest file and detailing them down smooth. Any last lines and marks on them, I'm going to be getting rid of those and spend a good bit of time on this until we're ready for finish. 
Um, we use a 400 grit sanding block and that fills in pores and, and bits left from the, the, the file. And then I can come in with the finest file and clean those out. The sanding block shows me where I need to detail, but the last thing that's going to be touching it is the, the finest file. Uh, except for right before finish, because I'm going to be putting oil in this, um, I'm actually going to hit it with some 400 grit sandpaper, just very, very lightly, and let that dust put into the pores. Um, having the dust uh, on the, the surface will actually pull the finish down a little bit deeper. Um, it gives you a better contrast. And the contrast is really what you want uh, with these as they have uh, the, the, the tiger striping on there. You want to see that, that difference between areas that have pulled more down and less. If you're working with a smooth surface of maple and you don't want that blotchiness, do not sand it. The best thing you can do is plane it. That way it's not going to be pulled down differently in different spots. And then we can put the boiled linseed oil on here and it goes pop. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I was just happy. The, the tiger striping on this just came out beautifully. And then the, the, the coloring and that darker stripe. I really, really liked how these came out. Just really, really cool. I'm going to let that soak up as much as it wants. And then I'm going to apply some paste wax and rub that in and just cake that on there. Uh, let the paste wax sit and then polish it off. And that gives me a really nice matte finish that I, 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 I very enjoy. Um, with that tiger striping on there, um, yeah, they're beautiful. And they feel great in the hand. You can still feel the wood and the, the organic feeling on it is, is phenomenal. So now, um, yeah, there's the plane. And <laughs> you can see all the other things that everyone has done on this. The, it is just, uh, wow, beautiful, beautiful plane. The only question is, does, does this thing actually take a shaving? Is it actually a functional plane? Well, after all the work from all of us, let's take it for a drive. And sure enough, she pulls curls, and she pulls really nice curls. Um, very pleasing and a lot of fun, but even more fun to look at because, man, that thing is pretty. But yes, curls. This is happy. There you go. I love this. I, I'm just, this is a, a fun collaboration. I really had a, a great time with this. This is with Hand Tool Rescue, Rex Kruger, Green Beetle, and Yuri Tuchman, all of us working together on this. And we're actually going to be raffling this off with the proceeds going to the Purple Heart Project. So you can actually get a chance to win this, which um, I think is kind of cool. Now, a couple of things you're going to see down below. There are links to all the other videos. So if you want to see how everything else is done, how a lot of the remake on this is done, go check out all the videos. There's a whole playlist where you can go through them and see them all. And if you want a chance yourself of winning this beautiful tool, uh, then you can buy raffle tickets and all of the money for that goes to the Purple Heart Project. This is a program designed to help veterans from around the world uh, cope with the problems of war by doing woodworking. And it is a really cool program set up to help people actually work through things and learn the art of woodworking, uh, actually setting them up with a full set of tools and shop so that they can keep going. And it's a really, really cool program. I'll leave links to that down below if you want to find out more about that and help out with the Purple Heart Project. Definitely go take a look at all the videos on this project. It just came out absolutely beautiful with all of the artwork into this piece. It is just beyond cool. <laughs> I absolutely love this. The winner will get this plan as it currently is, as well as all of the original parts that we took off of it and redid, uh, as well as my first set of knob and tote, and the second set then since I finally got the video footage for it. So uh, yeah, you're actually be getting quite a bit with this. So if you want to have a chance to win that, then get a raffle ticket and help out the Purple Heart Project, as well as look at all the videos and how this is done. Lots going on here. On top of all that, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who comments down below. Yes, just putting a comment, question, snide remark even. Thank you. That helps out the channel. Uh, anytime you actually put a comment down there, it's worth about 10 likes, which thank you for hitting the like button and all those things. It helps us get in front of more people. Uh, really, uh, the Google algorithm is king, and so we're kind of all slave to that around here. But if you want to help out even farther and uh, take us even more, then think about becoming a patron. All these people over here, they are patrons on Patreon. And without patrons, we wouldn't exist. You guys are the ones who sponsor this channel. We are, we can do these things. We can actually put together these things and make videos and turn on the lights because patrons are willing to sponsor this channel. So thank you for that. If you would like to help out and keep us going, then think about becoming a patron. There's links to that down below or click the little join button. And I think that'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. There's restoration, where you take a junky old tool and you completely strip it down. You make it brand new, like it just came from the store. There's restoration, which you clean it and you keep the patina and you show the age still on it, but it's still functional and, and showed what it is. And then there's this, which is like uh, sexification. Oh, la la, is he so pretty? Mm -hmm.